threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Welcome to the podcast this studio. This is a good podcast. <laughs> yeah, man. This Listen, one's been a long time coming, huh? It has. It's, yeah. <clears throat> we wanted to do it right. So we sure. didn't want AI to take over. We may not have destroy done right. this podcast. Uh, I still feel like we didn't do it quite right. No. But we're, we're trying. <laughs> yeah. Right? This what? is a, this is the first round. Yeah. What are we talking about today, Cam? Um, well, it's a big topic nowadays, yeah. AI. So sure, we yeah. figured, why don't we talk about AI in the end of the world? Mm-hmm. And what could come of AI and its evilness? The AI apocalypse. Yeah. Right? So... That's what we're going to do. We're excited about that, though. And we may piss off some robots oh. along the way. Yeah, I love pissing off a robot. They're listening right now. It's I just mean, like anytime. Gathering all the information they anytime can. Anytime you see those, like, MIT robots, they're always, like, kicking them and, like, <laughs> yelling at them and stuff. <laughs> That's what I feel like we're there's, doing. Um, there's a YouTube channel that I've watched. They, they do a lot of digital animation stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Have you have you ever looked at, I think it's Corridor Digital. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they 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 have one where they're just like beating it, kicking mm-hmm. it, and it's like shooting like super accurate. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool how they did yeah, it. But that's awesome. It's also terrifying. It is, guys. Most subscription boxes are full of samples and junk that you'll just never use, but not BattleBox. It's the monthly subscription box full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. Each month, BattleBox sends you the coolest selection of hand-picked outdoor survival and everyday carry gear. I'll value it at far more than what you normally pay. You never know what's in the next box, but here's a sampling of what users received this month. The Ruck and River Yona Backpack. Yeah, Cam's yeah. Cam's excited about that. And the Kershaw Leak EDC knife. I've been carrying it for the past week. I love it, actually. That's right. You did mm-hmm. have it the other night. And all this badassness starts just $34.99 per month. They've shipped over a million boxes and one best men's subscription box of 2020. Our listeners get a free knife when you sign up at trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. That is trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. Listener reviews starts now that in the box it is yeah oh good pretty cool huh? that's the coolest looking thing ever yes sir so um best podcast on the internet oh that was nice brings laughter to my work day almost every day there isn't another place that you can oh, i just <laughs> overrode that by okay don't you can that. get up-to-date news on friggin' scary current events and still manage to laugh it off mm-hmm. they always have new information in every new episode yet are always uh reminding us to handle uh, just handle the basics. Mm-hmm. P.S. I would pay money for access to the pre-show rambling. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would. I'm sure many probably yeah. would. It would probably day. be the end of our podcast if mm-hmm. we did. <laughs> Might be. Because <laughs> my wife got a hold of that. <laughs> She'd be like, uh-uh. <laughs> you done, Charles yeah, yeah. Hapgood. Oh, that was Charles Hapgood. <laughs> it came from Charles Hapgood, yeah. <laughs> Good old Charles Hapgood. Charles Hapgood with no E, though. Charles Oh, that's it. Have yeah. good. <laughs> Charles, have good. Charles, have good the fourth. I, I'm a grandson of the great Charles, have good the first. <laughs> this podcast has some great information. Yes. If you guys want Speak to be my grandpappy. part of this portion of the podcast, go to iTunes, go to Facebook, leave us a five star review, and make it awesome. <laughs> It's a mad, mad world. <laughs> you do a whole one like that. <laughs> you do a whole, whole episode. Episode. <laughs> in the Charles Abgood voice. Charles Abgood. Charles Abgood. Did you see, I didn't, I, this isn't part of the news, but did you mm. see that um, ex-military guy like ran across from South Korea to North yeah, Korea? Yeah, I did see that. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, he was like, he, he got in trouble for something, didn't he? Yeah. And he was just like, oh crap. Worst pla- let me home. run to the worst place on <laughs> I earth. I want to eat some rabbits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> crazy person uh, yeah yeah um i had a hard time finding what i wanted to talk about today in uh mad mad world and it looks like you didn't you got like five links in there or something so <laughs> yeah. well you know what yeah I mean? <laughs> of the two yeah um they, they talk about the same thing. okay i just wanted to talk about the insane heat that's been hitting the <sighs> world the past like few weeks it's insane yeah uh the heat index is above 150 degrees in parts of the middle east holy crap so that's like it's not necessarily that's what the temperature it's not the is, actual temperature but it's what it but feels like <sighs> 150 degrees 
That's like, man. you can make a brisket at over three hours <laughs> like, outside. Literally, just crawling in the oven. <laughs> yeah. Turn it on and sitting in Turn there. Turn it day. on. You know, just baste yourself up before you get in. So that's kind of crazy. And also, like Death Valley has been pushing 130 yeah, it's close degrees. To record. I saw the ocean temperature in Florida was like. Wasn't it like 90 something in some places? Not really? I was like, wouldn't that kill everything? <laughs> I would think so. I may have misread. Might have been 60. <laughs> I don't know. So well, say, I, I saw something about saying like the temperature was 70, but the water on the shore was like <clears throat> oh, really? almost 90 or something. There's water in a bucket on the shore. It's up to 90 <laughs> degrees. All of our testing's out of the same bucket. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, um, anyway, that could be shouldn't have case. even said it when I didn't know. <laughs> I know. Uh, 20 straight days of heat above 110 in Phoenix. Uh, oh, so, sorry, people who live in Phoenix. Gulf of Mexico has been super hot. Hot in China, too. Uh, 104 degrees in Beijing for two days in a row. That's pretty crazy. Italy, Greece, all of it's hot. Yeah. So um, Sea temperature in Miami. Not sea. Don't go and see <laughs> the temperature. Yeah. Uh, it says 86 degrees. Oh, my gosh. That don't make any sense, <laughs> does, does it? it? I didn't think anything would live in that. I don't know. I wouldn't live in it. Miamians can. Cubans can, apparently. I don't know. That's weird. <clears throat> so, anyways, I just... mine sea was surface temps. I think that's what surface it is. Surface temps. Mine was just saying, like, look, it's super hot. Uh, be careful. Uh, understand uh, what you need to do to stay uh, cool. You know what I mean? Because it gets too hot, you might die. Yeah. It can been, be death. Yep. They're, like... Super easy to get heat exhaustion yeah. and heat stroke. Like, so just chill out, bro. Everybody thinks they're doing it right, and then they <laughs> die. Get some element. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, for sure. You got to exactly stay right. hydrated. So this goes along with our episode a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw it in news like a month or two ago, New York Mayor Adams, uh, NYPD, reintroduced the robot do- uh, oh, robotic dogs despite previous backlash and security concerns. That's funny. So I, he's I like really like... Do you? So he's basically he's he's putting a lot of funding into like letting these Roomba like robots roam the streets and yeah. do some policing, and then they're bringing back the dog, the the dirty dog. <laughs> like, but, how do they police? I don't know. They just bark at They've people. They've been who kicked are... and punched and everything else. So <laughs> let them off. let them go out into the streets. Yeah, I think I think the dogs are a little bit more for like situations, right? But the little I don't know how the little portable like. The little mobile garbage cans. I don't oh, yeah. know what they're supposed to do. I don't know either. No jaywalking stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, um, I don't know how that but works. But like looking at this, like, um, what do they call it? The Digidog or whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, carry power yeah. of up to 14 kilograms of inspection equipment. It has uh-huh. control of the robot from afar using an intuitive tablet application. Sure. Probably can be hacked. Mm, uh, yeah. Program program repeatable autonomous missions to gather consistent data. God, sounds go like down, go, go playing down to the video games all day. I know. At work. But like this is this is what we're talking about. Yeah. It's like some AI integration with robotics. That mm-hmm. is terrifying. It is. And to yeah. let it do the policing, it's like yeah, I robot, man. It totally is. And we're gonna talk about a lot so, of that today. That is happening in the world. The world's mad. It is a mad, Dude. mad world. Now. And so, yeah, we decided we wanted to talk about AI, uh, surviving AI, the AI apocalypse, kind of all of it in one. Like, what is AI? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we people talk about it a lot, but some people are just, like, clueless. If I think if I asked my mom what AI was, she'd be like, there's a movie you came out. Those are vowels. I don't know. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so It's true. My parents, yeah. So let's talk about what is artificial and, yeah, AI Artificial intelligence, that's kind of what it means. But what is it in simple words? Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence or AI is the ability of a computer or a robot controlled by a computer to do tasks that are usually done by humans because they require human intelligence and discernment. So that's kind of the basics, but it gets even weirder and crazier than that as we go, right? We're going to talk about some of the stuff because AI can get very smart. AGI, artificial general intelligence. There's so much to this. Man, it's just bonkers. So I haven't heard of AGI. <clears throat> artificial general intelligence. CGI. CGI. <laughs> Computer generated. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is the AI apocalypse? Because that's kind of yeah. a little bit of what we're talking that's about more today, directly, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the term AI apocalypse refers to a hypothetical scenario where artificial intelligence systems become vastly superior to human intelligence and, poten- and potentially pose a significant threat to humanity's existence 
or way of life. So that, that's the whole thing. It doesn't necessarily have to wipe us all out. It, it could like just drastically change the way we live yeah. or how our society runs. And we, we're going to talk a little bit more yeah. on just how that could happen. Absolutely. It represents a future in which AI technology surpasses human control leading to unintended consequences that have severe negative implications for society. So like right now, like we have, you know, some AI stuff going on. We have pretty good control over it. We we have it do very specific things, but as it gets better, as it grows, things can get weird pretty fast, right? The thing that's scary about it is like, there's a lot of scenarios that I see like that could happen. That's kind of creepy. Sure. But this one like seems more clear to me. For sure. It's already, like, it can just generate Mm -hmm. a whole discussion and interact. And I'm like, put it in the body? That's good. (laughs) It's so scary, man. So I don't know if you've ever heard of, like, the singularity, the AI. I hadn't until the AI singularity. Um, So basically, the technological singularity or the AI singularity is a hypothetical future point in time at which the technological growth becomes uncontrollable and irreversible, resulting in unforeseeable changes to human civilization. So this actually clears it up a little more. According to the most popular version of the singularity hypothesis, I.J. Good's intelligence explosion model, an upgradable intelligent agent will eventually enter a runaway reaction of self-improvement cycles. Each new and more intelligent generation appearing more and more rapidly, causing an explosion in intelligence and resulting in a powerful super intelligence that qualitatively far surpasses <laughs> all human intelligence. So scary. So it's basically you have some sort of AI or some sort of robot or, or system that is able to upgrade itself, right? It's smart enough it's like that it says, I'm going to up deep learning and stuff yes. that we're doing right now. It's like 100%. training it to teach itself. Yes. It's, but it gets to a point where it just starts to like really snowball and it gets better and better and better. And each version is exponentially better than the previous version. And then it just- Unlike humans. Yeah. Where we're getting exponentially dumber. (laughs) We're getting worse. Like we were apes. Then we got to humans. We're getting better and better. Now we're going back to Wheel and fire. Computers. Now we're like- Now we're going backwards. (laughs) Sitting at home. Yeah. So it could get to a point where they get so smart. We are just sort of obsolete. We can't stop it. Because they've figured out how to make it counter similar. everything that we can throw at them. Exactly. That's terrifying. Exactly. <laughs> so that's kind of like the singularity when someone talks about that. That's what they're talking about. Cool. There's a point at which it just like bursts and it's scary. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like that idea. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Stephen Hawking, I don't know if you know about him, Cam. Uh, Bill Gates, you know about him, mm-hmm. you know, Windows and stuff, Microsoft. <laughs> Elon Musk. He's been in the news lately. Not dumb people. No, these are smart people. They have expressed concerns about the possibility that AI could develop to a point that humans could not control it. And if these guys are saying it, they just wouldn't be saying it for no reason. Yeah, right. Yeah, especially like Stephen Hawking. I like, know. He's a guy that like he's a physicist. He theorizes he underst- all like yes. what could happen sitting in the fire. Yeah, playing with his keyboard. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> well, but, not anymore. But, but he, like, his his motives were always pretty altruistic. He wasn't a yeah. guy that was like out for business. You could say different from with Bill Gates true, and true. Elon Musk, yeah. right? Stephen Hawking, the dude. But the thing is, the, <clears throat> the other two, Bill Gates and Elon Musk, mm-hmm. they are very involved in technological advancements and yes. all that. So they know what's going on in oh, a way. Yes. We'll talk about Elon a little but, later too. Like, so he's, he's an AI generated human, right? <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not real. <laughs> Um, with Hawking theorizing that this could spell the end of the human race, basically AI. Stephen Hawking said in 2014 that success in creating AI would be the biggest event in human history. <laughs> like, that's it. That's the biggest event in human history. Unfortunately, it might also be the last unless we learn how to avoid the risks. Hawking believed that in the coming decades, AI could offer incalculable benefits and risks, such as technology outsmarting financial markets out inventing human researchers, out manipulating human leaders and developing weapons we cannot even understand. And we're going to talk about a lot of that stuff later. But in 2015, Nick Bostrom joined Stephen Hawking, Max Tegmark, Elon Musk, Lord Martin Rees, John Tallinn, and numerous AI researchers in signing the Future of Life Institute's open letter speaking to the potential risks and benefits associated with artificial intelligence. So I think a lot of what they're saying is like, I think AI is good, but there's a lot of risks and we need to go into this slowly and with um, clear heads and with like rules as we move forward 
because we it's don't like want the new declaration of independence yeah, from <laughs> kind of, but it's like, the hard part is, is like, who knows what like crazy, you know, researchers in the back yeah, of that's some lab thing. in China. They're is like, doing. I don't care. Like they're just going to do anything it. to take an advantage of yes. the United States uh-huh. or any other country. Yeah. They're just letting it, they're just unleashing it. They're unleashing it. So the causes of an AI apocalypse could vary depending on the fictional or speculative context that we'll kind of talk about here. There's a few possible causes that have been discussed in literature, movies, and theoretical discussions, just like Stephen Hawking, you know, right. that, that was his thing. So let's kind of talk about some of that. Cameron. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's been used a lot in media, many, you know, books and mm-hmm. movies, like you said. And so I kind of wanted to take this uh, and break it down into like the possible outcomes of like a, you know, post apocalyptic, a post apocalyptic world from AI takeover and stuff like what it could lead to, what it yeah. could be like. And kind of, I'm, I'm kind of putting in some movies that have right. kind of gone over this as well. And so, like, a lot of this is like very dramatic outcomes. Exactly. But. It's not necessarily going to be that way, but we want right. to talk about those because they're fun. Yeah, like yep. I said, it could That's be a, like we a, do. It could be a very like slow descent into just like minor adjustments that AI is making to the way we yeah. live. That could be like, oh gosh, yeah, yeah. we've changed. <laughs> like you know office I mean? space, little like pennies are yeah. supposed to just go in, trickle in over time. <laughs> That's right. You, you get a, a little a decimal tweak. point somewhere yeah. wrong, and you're in trouble. Yeah. Um, so, um, to add what, you know, many, many scholars believe that the advances in AI will eventually lead to semi-apocalyptic or post scarcity economy Mm. where intelligent machines can outperform humans in nearly, if not every domain. That's see, that's super scary. It is. (laughs) So, um, here are some of the different post-apocalyptic, oh my gosh, I can't say it. It's hard to say. Post-apocalyptic ways. So, um. Let's say it's a real nice one. This is the libertarian utopia. That sounds nice. Yeah. This is the best case scenario. Instead of AI taking over the world, they coexist peacefully alongside humans mm-hmm. and just kind of help us advance like technology and stuff like that. Sure. Um, this is more like the movie, like Bicentennial Man. Do you remember that one? That's with, with Robin Williams. Williams. Yeah. You know, he's just yeah. smart. The robots are working. Mm-hmm. They, they never really become evil or do yeah. negative things. Um, but there were still problems in that one, wasn't there? Were there were problems in like, that too. He had he kind of became self aware or something. Yeah, I can't did. remember how that went. They, right? it, it kind of he started to not perform the way he should because he believed yeah. that he was uh, a living being. As that's well. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And then there's AI. I never saw AI. That's what the kid from yeah, the so, Sixth Sense, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So he basically in that movie, don't they make him to replace like another? Yeah. A kid. And so there's like this, it's a really highly advanced world. I actually think the coasts are all flooded. Yeah. Man, it's been a long time. Like basically the world's kind of had all these changes, but AI has become a big part of it. Mm-hmm. And, and he wants to be a real boy. It's like a Pinocchio it story. It is. It's like a Pinocchio um, story. That was a Steven Spielberg movie, It was right? a Steven yeah. Spielberg. I don't know why I didn't ever see it, but. Mm-hmm. And then there's like Ex Machina. Ex Machina. Yeah. Is that what it is? Ex Machina? Ma- I think so. I don't know. I've only seen it. Cause I've actually never seen it. I need to watch it. I never saw it either. I, I just saw the name of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know how to say I've it. I've heard it's they very know. good, actually. Yeah, so um, from what I get from this one is same thing. She's an AI-created mm-hmm. machine, and um, he, f- like, falls in love with her. But she kind of manipulates him because she's wanting to get out and live life. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. it's becoming smarter, more intelligent, and taking on its own That's life. another thing, like like love and sex with AI is it kind of a crazy thing. It becomes super controlling Did you too. see Her, the movie? No, is that the one with um, Joaquin? Joaquin? Yeah, it's kind of that similar thing. He, he falls like, in love with yeah. like a, no. an, uh, it's like a software or something. Like what's the, AI what's thing? that old show from the like 90s or 80s where he falls in love with the computer? I don't know what that is. You don't remember that one? I don't think so. Oh man, it's uh, that was a pretty cool show. If you had the name of it, I, it might spur, <sighs> but I don't. I don't know what that is. I swear it's like some <clears throat> dreams or something. Oh really? Anyways, I don't know. Um, so there's that libertarian utopia. Yeah, that's nice. And then uh, is this what egalitarian? E- uh, or benevolent ego- dictator. Is oh, the I first skipped. One. I skipped. Yep. I've been scrolling down here too fast. So compared to the utopia above, this is a bit of a. Uh, demotion for humans. Okay. Powerful, complex AI runs society, imposes rules on humans, but most humans are okay with it. They're like, it's safer, it's better. Yeah. Smarter beings are in control of things. Well, mm-hmm. not beings, but smarter technology is in control and managing things. So 
people are like, that's, yeah. that's good. They're not like fighting against it. They're okay with that. Yeah. I, I read a book that, that had this, they were actually, they were like aliens, not AI, but it's kind of that, that benevolent dictator yeah. thing. Um, childhood's end. It's, yeah. it's a good book. That Arthur one kind of makes sense too. Yeah. It's just like, <clears throat> things are better because of AI. Yeah. And so they're just living under that. Mm-hmm. So how do you say this? Is it egalitarian, egalitarian yeah. right? Sort of a futuristic socialism. This is like the Russian version. Yes. This is where humans and cyborgs coexist peacefully due to the elimination of personal property and a mm. guaranteed income. Wow. They're benefiting, but um, yeah. yeah, in a bad way. You could see that happening, though. Uh, that one I could see big time. For sure. Um, Russians are working on it already. Uh-huh. The gatekeeper scenario may, uh, is more like people... It stays out of people's business as much as possible, and it's the primary role is to prevent another super intelligence from rising up and possibly taking over the world mm. so it's kind of like controlling the advancement it's like it's the yeah. smartest thing and it's putting kind of a stop on it going into a bad direction i kind um, of feel like aliens are doing this to us right now i think so too like yeah. a gatekeeper thing they're watching yep. over us yep i feel like i robot kind of fits into that a little yep. bit because it's like they're he basically developed Sonny to be that gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, to like, wait, this thing is going to take over at some point. So he created it to basically stop it. The crazy iRobot was written by Isaac Asimov back in like the 50s. Was it really? Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah, it's a great it's movie. It's one of my favorite movies. But like Isaac Asimov was sort of like the the father of all like robot AI type um, stories. Like a lot of that, that long comp- ago, he was talking that way. Yeah, dude. Like that's great. That's, that's very crazy thing. much intelligent being like a robotics turning mm-hmm. and having their own life and feeling like they're human. Yep. Creepy stuff. Yeah. Super creepy. Then there's like the protector God here. It's like a godlike AI entity that, um, I'm going to skip that part. It operates <laughs> behind the scenes, so to speak mm-hmm. to the point that some humans doubt its very existence. So this is kind of like a simulation. Yes. You know, Matrix is kind of this. Yeah. Because it's like you don't know about the world that's controlled by a superior, like, being. You don't know you're sitting. Or a superior, like, AI. You don't know you're sitting in a pod. Matrix is weird, but that's kind of what it is. Yeah, it's it's controlled Mm -hmm. by a superior. um, Sure. Robotic race or whatever you call that thing. Mm -hmm. Weird little. Uh, squid like <laughs> but yeah. anyways yeah. you live in this simulation because it's all controlled by them right then the enslaved god um, mm. is like a uh, scenario to be it's it's this is where we have super intelligent AI that's actually confined by humans yeah. we harness it using its advanced capabilities to produce technology and wealth for ourselves pretty much what everybody's telling us to do with AI right now exactly <laughs> yeah. this is like we're enslaving it to do the work for us. Oh, yeah. The chat GPTs, like, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. The crazy stuff. I mean, it really is really cool, the yeah. stuff you could do with it. And I keep seeing all these, like, business things. It's oh, like, if I constantly. could go back and use AI, I would make millions this way and this yep. way. Use it. Understand it. Mm-hmm. So that kind of falls in there. That Conquerors um, we have artificial beings to view humans as, like, a threat, nuisance, and waste of a resource. This is the one I think most people... This is of. what we see. Yeah. This is like, like the AI the, apocalypse that most people are like, this is this is what, yeah. the worst case scenario. Right? So they um, are the better mm-hmm. intelligence, and mm-hmm. so they want to eliminate humankind. This is Skynet, Terminator. This is, uh, this yes. is like, get rid of them, because yeah. we're, we're better. Created Such, by humans and to, to wipe out humans. Such a good... Uh, Terminator 1 and 2, yeah. like, how good are those? I, those? I mean, Terminator 2 specifically yeah. is better than 1, I think. I love but 2. Terminator 2 is great. Terminator 1 is great, but Terminator 2, just like, such a great story. Yeah. Arnold's supposed to be good. He's, he's yeah. supposed to be good. He's supposed to That's be. That's why I like him. Yeah, That's exactly. why I like those better. Yeah. He's the good guy. He's the good guy. Yep. <laughs> Descendants. Um, That's why I told that to my wife the other day. I'm like, in Terminator 1, he was the bad guy. Yeah. She's like, what? <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. She was like, like a lot of people have never seen Terminator One. Oh, They've yeah, only seen true. Terminator that's Two. True. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's the naked bad guy. He was the naked bad guy, <laughs> and then he's the naked good guy. <laughs> um. So the descendants. This is like a passing of the torch. Um. We'll look at the AI in a way that proud parents would. It's like we developed this superior intelligence, mm-hmm. and it's going to kind of last beyond us. Yeah. It's the better. Like we're 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 going to live on through the intelligent things that we built which i don't think is a horrible thing no i don't think so right because they could live forever you know it could live forever in in a way and it could and it could control the universe could get so smart yeah that it's the best of all things but it and, but could still have like a part of us somehow exactly. that moves forward into the future yeah. forever yeah. yeah pictures 
Pictures for sure. <laughs> Pictures of <laughs> us box podcasting. <laughs> yep. Yeah, our podcast yeah, will our live podcast forever. Could be recorded. Oh my gosh, this yeah. could be like thousands of years from now. Yeah. People are listening Wanna listen to, to this, this right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some idiots back in twenty twenty three. They created AI robots. <laughs> Not the, this particular. How the robot. hell did these people do yeah. that? Then there's like the zookeeper scenario. Mm. Um, doesn't kill com- kill the humans completely. Mm. Kind of keeps us around. Chooses a few of us in a captive state to kind of just work in the way that they want. Yeah. This is again kind of like the Matrix. Sure. Um, 1984. Uh, the, oh, this is based on like the book from mm-hmm. George Orwell's novel of the same name, 1984. Mm-hmm. It borrows the central idea from that book as well, where human authorities create a kind of surveillance state to ban AI research, fearful of its abilities. Yeah. What we feel Elon and all them are doing right now. Yeah, exactly. Ban it. Get rid of it. <clears throat> Reversion. Humans have seen a terrifying potential of AI and super intelligence and want nothing to do with it. Yeah. We adopt anti-tech views. Which is, we see both sides of this right yep, now. Absolutely. Reverting back to, this is the, kind of the extreme of going r- way back to pre-industrial, pre-technological society, like kind of like Amish. Yeah, I We don't see want that. any tech yeah. because it's too, th- it's too scary and it's, it's too big of a threat. Oh, there's, there's tons of <clears throat> sci-fi books that, that, that this, have this that This kind of makes sense though. It's like, yeah. how do you eliminate it? The only way is to go backwards. Go all the way back. Like get yeah. rid of all the could be advanced technology. You got to be like Christopher Nolan. He doesn't have a smartphone. I, blo- I when I read that, I was like, yeah, no one, the dude's like a, how does he do what he does? Yeah. With, and when well, then he shoots everything on like film. A theorist that can just make yeah. his movies for what he believes could be. He, and he writes, and he, he shoots everything on like crazy film that yeah. nobody really so uses. Cool. Uh, anyway, sorry. I had to get my Christopher Nolan oh, reference shoot. in. Yeah. <laughs> and then self-destruction. Yeah. Um, Basically, super intelligence is never created because humanity drives itself into extinction <laughs> by other means. Sure. So we never even get to that point because we're going to kill ourselves otherwise. That's a big possibility. Yeah. So yeah. AI is getting to that point, but we're just going to ruin ourselves. Sure. So, anyways, um, those are. I mean, there's a ton of movies that mm-hmm. use AI. I was just thinking, like, even <laughs> like cartoons, um, or uh, animation, uh-huh. like oh, yeah. the, In- the Incredibles. He mm-hmm. builds that robot that gets smarter and smarter to defeat. The supers. Oh, really? You know, I don't. You gotta remember that. I've seen that once in my life. Oh, come on. Sorry, you've seen it more than that. You <laughs> love that movie. I've only seen it once. No, but like, it, it, like, um, syndrome like builds that robot that's smarter and it uh-huh. um, learns how to defeat the. And then when syndrome tries to use it, it shoots off his little control. Oh, really? So that like it the the Becomes person that thing. built it mm-hmm. gets it takes him out and or you know. It's just mm-hmm. kind of cool. It's like, man, AI is used in a lot of different um, For sure. plots, so it's yeah. kind of cool. But what is more cool than that mm. is preventing cybercrime. <laughs> Seriously, like, what a better, <laughs> there's no better a sponsor for yeah. today's podcast Seriously. than Surfshark. So cybercrime crime is not only conducted by one Russian kid. Mm-hmm. It's AI is used all the time for this oh, man. to just um, generate emails and send us all kinds of yep. garbage. But there's a way you can protect yourself. So you take basically your computer, mm-hmm. put it in a different location. They can't, they can't uh, get in and take all of your information. Surfshark VPN can protect you and all your devices from online threats and even AI. Yeah. Go Gray Man Online. Shield your information from websites and other online services. It's very good if you are on public Wi-Fi a lot. Mm-hmm. The app's super easy to use. You just turn it on. It will shut off your Wi-Fi or your internet connection completely if it disconnects so that you know you're always protected. Um, The thing I like, too, is if you don't really know how to use a VPN, this is a good one that you can try out because you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. And it's the most affordable because it'll apply to all your devices for less than $60 for two two years and three months. It's like, yeah... (laughs) There's if you're no, worried about some of this stuff, this is like a real basic thing. Try it you out. Can do. If you don't like it, you yeah. get your money back. But I'm, I'm for 60 bucks yeah. to have protection on public Wi Fi for your own home, mm-hmm. put it in your router. This is the way to do it. So go to um, surfshark.com, use casual preppers for 83% off, and be protected. Yeah, we have a link in our bio, a link in the show notes. Yeah, like I've said before, I've purchased this twice mm-hmm. on my own. No, you know, they didn't give it to us for free um because I know how well and how easy it is to yep. use. Exactly. So let's talk about some of the potential dangers of AI cam. They're numerous. 
And we had to really whittle this down because we could go on forever <laughs> are. on the potential dangers of this stuff. Because sometimes, but, like you were saying, I think all we see is like, oh, it's going to get into robotics, take over, and yes. just be like Terminator. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But there's so many different ways that it yeah. can affect us. And we're never going to even get to all of them because right. there's just so many different ways it could happen. But let's talk about like privacy invasion and manipulation. There's a lot of stuff that goes Unless you that. have Surfshark. Unless you have Surfshark, yeah. AI's potential to reconstruct a person's inner monologue. Think about this. Could lead to manipulation of beliefs and behavior as it may come to know individuals better than they know themselves. Ugh. This is, honestly, this is something that could be a thing with these brain yeah. computer interfaces similar to what Elon's doing with Neuralink. So this is a brain uh, computer interface. Who knows in the future what that could lead to with AI being in our brains, um, like connected to the internet all the time. Like, How do you compete with that? I, if you, you don't get it. You have to get it. That's yeah. the whole point. Like, it's it's uh, It'll get to a point where... It's like you, athletes and steroids. Yep. You, you can't exactly. stay up with them unless you... No indulge in the it's like the, as well. the, the top athletes in jiu-jitsu they they're all doing steroids because it's not illegal yeah so in in jiu-jitsu and so they all do it because if you don't do it like you're not you gonna, can't compete with them you can't compete so yeah it, it, it's a thing that's going to be crazy so uh brain computer interfaces like i said uh elon's doing it with Neuralink. there's just a lot of weird stuff going on here with ai <laughs> okay um te technology research a machine with superhuman scientific research abilities would be able to beat the human research community to milestones in things like nanotechnology or advanced biotechnology. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, there's good that there's you good, could get from it. But it, it's, again, there could be unintended consequences if we don't understand it yep. all and crazy stuff. Um, <laughs> strategizing. This is, a, this is a very simple thing, but a super intelligence might and probably will be able to outwit human opposition in a lot of different things. Yeah. So there's, have you ever heard of the game Go? I think it's called Go. Sounds familiar. It's it's like a, it's a complicated game that like, um, Sounds simple. It, humans, yeah, <laughs> humans like used to not be, or no, um, computers used to not be able to beat humans because it was so nuanced apparently. Oh really? But no. now, the AI is getting so good that they can beat humans and Go. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Uh, that's a thing. So, you know, like the, not, it was kind of like a, like humans used like to be able to beat mark. chess. Yeah. Humans used to always be able to beat computers in chess. Cause it was, it's a very, now you can't, game. no chance. Now they're just so good that it's hard. Right. Anyways, strategizing, um, economic productivity. As long as a copy of the AI could produce more economic wealth than the cost of its hardware, individual humans would have an incentive to voluntarily allow the artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence to run a copy of itself on their systems. It's like, it's going to make me more money than it costs. I'm going to let it go. But again, that's good in some ways, but there could be consequences in the future <laughs> of what that could mean. Unpredictability. That's some scary stuff there too, because it's like, those that have money mm -hmm. can spend and, and get the most intelligent, most advanced system yeah. to make more money, it and could, it just leaves us in the it dark. It could really increase the disparity of For sure. the classes. Yeah, that's exactly you know what, what I mean. Else. Unpredictability and emerging capabilities. This is, we were kind of talking, you mentioned a little bit of this earlier. The black box nature of AI and its potential for suddenly acquiring new abilities makes it difficult to anticipate and manage its impact. So... Uh, the black box thing is the inability for us to see how deep learning systems make their decisions. That's kind of the black box problem. Yeah. Like something's going on back there. They're making decisions and they're usually good. We don't know how they're doing it. Yeah. Right. And so that it's very unpredictable and it, it's kind of scary and we don't know <laughs> what could happen. Okay. So that, that's kind of creepy. But again, like you could get some like incredible results from that. And we unpredictable. Have. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So but, it's like, do we let it go and just bring up new things that we would never figure out yeah. or let it get to a point that it kills us? Yeah, or do we put parameters on it and say, uh, we can't let it get too crazy. True. Right? We don't know. Um, exponential growth and loss of control. And who's putting those parameters on there? That's like you said. I don't know. It's like, yeah. we, our parameters are way out here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. AI's self-improvement and ability to interact with other technologies could outpace our understanding and capacity to control its development and effects. So you get to a point where it's interacting with different technologies and we just can't keep up. And we don't know what's going to happen and it's just loss of control. <laughs> Again, kind of the same thing. Well, I can't stop it. And let it go. <laughs> let her go. <laughs> um, this one, I think, is one of the scariest. Concentration of power and arms race. Yeah. 
The advent of super intelligent AI may result in an unparalleled consolidation of power among a select few entities, leading to increased power imbalances among nations. I mean, China, for one, is like really big on like this AI, drone technology, all that kind of stuff. They're going hard in the paint to get this stuff done, right? Uh, corporations and individuals, all of those. Historically, the quest for power and arms race have caused instability and often given rise to conflict. The development of AI could potentially follow a similar pattern posing significant challenges to global stability and cooperation for sure so that that one right there could that really, one's creepy it could yeah it could stir up a hornet's nest there you mm -hmm. just don't know right speaking of china this was one i was going to add to the mad mad world mm -hmm. did you see all the deforestation that they're doing right now mm -mm. so they had like this time i think it was like early 90s where um the place just didn't have sustainable food supplies uh, and, yeah. and and they even to this date you know they they depend a ton on um imported goods yes yeah but for some reason right now they're like deforesting a ton of places and growing tons of wheat and rice mm. almost like a lot of them are suspecting they want self-sustainability oh, if they are going to go to war because yeah. they don't have to depend on anybody's imports oh, my gosh i don't know Ter th all that stuff creeps me out yeah and they do they i mean they're big on the the only thing that we have done to slow them down a little is the chip thing. Yeah. To slow down the mm -hmm. semiconductors, mm -hmm. but like, ooh, that's scary stuff. It's creepy, man. Killing all those trees. What are they going to kill next? <laughs> I know. Who knows? Um, so anyways, um, so I guess this is just kind of like going on the AI is bad and aggressive. Sure. This is the AI that's, that's these are kind of the scenarios that are, are more, um, um, intense and scary. Okay. This is kind of the stuff that media is mostly focused yeah. on is like the bad, bad of all AI. So basically the AI have turned from helpful to aggressive and they're fed up with the human race. In this scenario, AI or system group of AI systems deliberately turn against humans to do um, malevolent programming, <clears throat> conflicting goals and evolution of objectives that no longer prioritize human well-being. Mm. Robot uprising. Yeah. Q robot again mm -hmm. this could uh occur due to programming error like it could just be a mistake in the yep. perimeter parameters and all of a sudden it just starts to do its own thing it's smart learning and it, and it just becomes a problem or it's intended to do that like yeah. a, a government or a system has created it to just you know go hog wild yeah do your thing just make sure you don't do it against us <laughs> yeah and then it just gets smarter and smarter and takes mm -hmm. out everything so that's pretty scary um what are some of the things that it can um, do? Uh, basically, hack. I mean, smart enough to just get in the computer system and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I, I think into I have any something. system, shut down like the grid and and do all that on its own without having anybody behind it. That's the creepy part. Take money. I mean, how much do we depend on the the digital world for finances for everything? For everything. Like, everything. Like, Anything that could tap into a listening. I mean, we have phones in our hands on us day in, day out. The um, only we thing. We talk to Google and Alexa and all that yeah. stuff. It's I can't like, think of anything that's not. Yeah. Except for like our local cinemas here. That's the only thing that's not on the grid. <laughs> so freaking. You got to have cash there. But everywhere else, it's all digital. It's all, it's all that's digital. That's a perfect example. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, that's pretty surprising, right? Yeah. Now nah, we don't take that. Now nah, we don't take cash. Yeah, gold coins or a bucket of milk. <laughs> we'll get you some popcorn. Bring me a dozen eggs. I'll let you see the Oppenheimer. You know, Seriously. it's like, we're like backwards here sometimes. We right? are. It's weird. Um, Gosh. But yeah, so yeah, hacking and, and control of all the digital world. Um, army of super fast, dead accurate machines. We, we like that can calculate and understand tra trajectories of, of bullets. And it's that stuff is what's really creepy to me. If you're fighting a soldier that's calculating your every move, you're what done, are you, man. you're, <laughs> you're yeah. done. It's like mm, right between the eyes, every yeah. shot. Um, then the, the other thing is just, you know, to create an army of robots yeah. that think and, and perform on their own. You know, you're not no loss of life there. Just send them to go destroy everything. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the Terminator form of For that. sure, so. yeah. That's crazy. Man. But yeah, that's, I mean, those are some of the more aggressive, scary scenarios with AI that aren't as, not not as much as like the normal world stuff that like sure. you were talking about. Yeah, and so, so some more of this normal world stuff, and some of this is actually kind of scary, but there are some unintended consequences that AI systems 
may exhibit, right? It might be undesirable or harm, harmful to humans due to flaws in their programming, like you talked about. Incomplete instructions, like, you know, MapQuest sending it into a river or something. Remember MapQuest? <laughs> or like misaligned objectives, right? This could result in unintended harm or disruption on a large scale. We don't know. There could be like these unintended, it's such a wide open road ahead. We just don't know what could yeah. happen. That's the creepy part. <laughs> I think she's laughing. MapQuest been pissing with us for a long time. <laughs> I know. Do you remember? Like, you, oh, yeah. You like print it off and then you get halfway through and you're like, all you got to do is turn around and it's like oh. takes you six miles into the next city. Exactly. To yeah. turn around. Mm-hmm. So AI as weapons. Uh, we talked about this a little bit, but if AI technology is harnessed for military purposes without appropriate safeguards, it could potentially lead to an AI arms race. Yeah. And it kind of already is a little bit it there. Is. Competing nations or groups may develop autonomous weapons systems with advanced AI capabilities, which could escalate into a situation where AI-controlled weapon systems make independent decisions to engage in conflict. Yeah. I that, mean, defense systems are already set that way, basically. Yeah. I've seen, and I don't know how real it is, um, mm-hmm. I've seen a video of like... yeah. Um, you know, those surface to air, uh, defense systems that fire off like a million yep. rounds a second. Mm-hmm. It was like tracking, uh, like civilian plane oh my and they're like, gosh. what is it doing? And then it like goes back Oh, and I'm like, so how, how do they, how do they make sure that that never yeah. happens? And you could shoot down and start a war with just a simple exactly. mistake. Yeah. Well, and you think about what is, uh, war games, the movie, yes. right? Kind exactly. of a similar thing. Like we don't, is this real or is this just yeah. like, you like to play a game? Yeah. You yeah. know, um, and all of this could be like we were saying, um, a different group, like some of all fears, yes. be a whole independent group that's mm-hmm. super smart, has yeah. a lot of money and they could create this AI system. Yeah. Ugh. So like just something as simple as like what you were talking about it, you know, one of those things tracking a civilian plane, it shoots it down. All of a sudden we have world war three yeah. because of bad. Okay. Programming. That was owned by the United States that yes. shot down, mm-hmm. you know, a Chinese plane. It's like, that's <laughs> can't terrible. even imagine. Yeah. Exactly. AI and decision-making. It's being deployed in critical decision-making domains such as healthcare. Yeah. So there's I have like, a little tidbit on that Yeah, there's later. like AI doctors and stuff these days and like, whoa. I'm one of, of them. You, yes. <laughs> Pretty failed system <laughs> Let there. Let me look at your ear. <laughs> <laughs> your butthole looks great. <laughs> Turn your head and cough, please. <laughs> um, that's cam all day long. <laughs> Testicles are a good size. <laughs> exactly. This is an ENT, I thought. I thought I was looking at my nose that's here. okay. What's happening? Oh, sorry. Bad programming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, there's in finance and also in criminal justice. If these systems exhibit flawed or biased decision making, it can oh, have be fun. significant consequences for individuals and societies. And there's like a lot of stuff that could go haywire yeah. with just a little bit of flawed thinking and decision making on AI's yeah. part. Yeah, and and like the talk of like not having that emotion, mm-hmm. and, and it's like. Yeah. It's a robot. It just conducts its stuff based on, you know, numbers and stuff. It's oh, like, it doesn't have feelings. This is like my Could wife it? told me that last night that I was a robot, basically. She's like, <laughs> you never cry. You're always just like, she's like, you're either just fine or mad. Fine or mad. There's nothing here, else. Here, yeah. here, <laughs> there, there's no here. crying. There's no other emotions. I'm like, I'm sorry. You want me to cry? <laughs> Ah, you're supposed to marry another woman, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. She really was kind of mad at women. Me. You're not that way. She was kind of mad at me last night about it. Well, you robot. I know. Stop being such a robot. And I'm like, I don't care about that, dear. <laughs> Can we go have <laughs> sex? Yes. It is time for intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> weep, weep, weep. My intercourse. That's what I'm saying. My intercourse alarm is going off. <laughs> it is time. Time to go to the back room, correct. <laughs> Let's work it out in the bed. <laughs> the best way to work out uh, <laughs> grievances between spouses is to have intercourse. <laughs> I recognize that you're mad. <laughs> I think we should go back into the bedroom. <laughs> oh, no, Maybe yeah. men do just seem like robots. I know. We uh, only think of one thing. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Oh, was I saying now? I don't even. Remember. I don't remember now either. Mm-hmm. Something about bedrooms and robots <laughs> yeah. and your wife being mad at you because uh-huh. you're a robot. Yeah, exactly. That's what um, I was so uh, this one, this one is, this one bothers me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Technology dependency. Mm. So we, I mean, we see this now, the reliance and the dependence on the news that comes from like TikTok or Facebook or YouTube. Sure. Um, throw in some AI that makes 
corrections based on what you watch and do and, you know, typically listen to. And it can make and generate uh, deep fake yeah. types of things. Mm-hmm. So just like if there's no restriction or um, like you said, parameters there, mm-hmm. it could just take everything that it knows that you like and do, mm-hmm. create a news feed of someone that you trust and believe or, you know, look up to. Like us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you yeah. imagine? Uh, yeah. Pretty much you always know yeah. what we're talking about exactly. is not AI generated. Mm. Um, but like phishing, ID theft, deep fakes, mm-hmm. fake news, social engineering, chatbot scams. AI gets, you know, is, is working on this stuff already, but the more intelligent it gets, mm-hmm. it starts to control everything you think and believe and want to do. Sure. And, um, that, that little, did you put in that? I did, link? yeah. I that just was saw pretty it. awesome because, crazy, um, dude. um, who was he talking with on there? I don't, I don't, I don't know. But basically they were talking about how, for example, like some, some sort of addictive thing that you just can't put down, like, you know, throw in pornography or something. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm addicted to pornography. Yes. Yeah. But like pornography has that power and control. If you can create something that your that your attention's so focused on and so into that you you can't put it down, like the e- AI could create that sort of thing mm-hmm. and just like you said, control all of your beliefs. Yeah, they're talking about like a TikTok type thing. It's really already very addictive. Yeah, but if AI to where got you cannot involved, stop it. Yeah. yeah, but if AI got involved, it could create something that we don't even know what it's like. Yeah, some other it thing. knows how to trigger all of yeah. that the dopamine, dopamine release yeah. and all of that mm-hmm. and from just video or audio or whatever, and you're basically mind controlled at that point. Yeah, you have no control over yourself because you're just so addicted to it. Yeah, we already see that already with like TikTok yeah. and and YouTube and Paw Patrol. Yeah, when they said <laughs> yeah, they said like it's not necessarily the machine or the algorithm that wants to do this. Exactly. But it's the people who control yeah. those things. And so like even the human element um, combined with this AI technology could just like freaking destroy people. Right, right. It can polarize everything yeah. and it, it can divide people and mm-hmm. divide nations and stuff just by making, yes. like customizing everything for what you, mm-hmm. oh my man, your, your beliefs become stronger. It's already and happening. Some of, yeah, it that happens. stuff has already it happened. It already happened. Yeah, it's already happening and then um, throw in even more intelligent ways to do it. Oh, oh my scary. gosh, it's so scary. So basically fueling the attention economy. Mm-hmm. AI could exacerbate information overload, mm-hmm. addiction, and breakdown of democracy due to its role in the attention economy, yep. further intensifying existing challenges. I feel like we're already like halfway politics there. politics and all of that is just going to get worse. It's like people are just like, they're so dumb. Like to do the most random like TikTok challenge when you know it's a really stupid thing exactly. to do. Like they're, people are like finger off. devolving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they couldn't tell you who the president was, or they yeah. couldn't tell you. It's like so weird. Yeah. It's weird. I know. It, it is. Man. Getting dumber from like this mind control. Yeah. I was just talking to my son like last night because mm-hmm. he really likes to, you know, he tries to go find an iPad or something so he can watch YouTube shorts. And I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, you're not getting anything out of this. I, I do it all the time. I, do too. I get it's sucked easy. into TikTok or Instagram yeah. or whatever. Because because it's like it's it's quick little little like some things are art like you do get some good things out of it yes so it's like that little intermix of mm-hmm. some good with a lot of garbage mm-hmm. it's just like am i going anywhere am i gaining any intelligence yeah. from this i have to like really cognitively like the when i'm watching stuff yeah. like this is good okay i need to like I, i'm trying yeah. to teach my yeah. algorithm See, you're using that right like i mean like i don't always do it but like i try sometimes i'm like this but that's is a good system content. that's built to do that yes exactly but if you use it if it's if it's in a bad way and it's made to just yeah corrupt. if you're not if you're not cognizant of what it's doing exactly you could like and easily, young minds aren't oh my gosh that's no. what scares me it's like you see something it's like boobs oh you got to get past it real quick because otherwise i'm like that yeah i know but you my know what i mean that's what i do but like <laughs> it it will quickly start to show you yeah. that stuff more and more often. So you got to be like so careful yeah. of like what you're watching. You do. Uh, and otherwise it does, it it does sometimes it. it does start to take you yeah. in it. I'm like, this isn't the crap that I like. Oh uh, yeah. And then you have to like teach it again. Like, no, I don't yep. want to see that. I it's did. super weird. That but it most does people that. aren't cognitively thinking about that when they're scrolling. Yeah. Right. No, so no, exactly. Oh my gosh. It's so creepy. Yeah. So creepy. So deep fakes and all that stuff mm-hmm. is just more challenging to future minds yes. and even ours. And so mm-hmm. that's, 
the deep fake stuff really bothers me because it's <laughs> like, yeah, sometimes you cannot tell. Like, no, you take a face that looks similar and you can just manipulate just enough, and and people will believe anything it says. In ten years, yeah. we're not going to be able. There's going to be no, no way. There's to no tell, way if man. there's not something in place, no one's ever yeah. going to be able to tell who's saying what. No. And so basically you just become the Amish, like you said. You, you got to get away from all of it. I've already started going that way. Not, I mean, not Amish, but I'm just like trying to disconnect from all that crap. Yeah. Because it's hard to tell what's what anymore. Right. And if it's a little mind controlling, yeah. moderately mind controlling now, it's just going to get worse. Yep. So this, this whole thing scares me because this is where I see social media kind of going. I'm not saying it's all bad, but I'm no. just saying like it, it's getting smarter and the attack on us and our our mm-hmm. kids and stuff is, is yeah. getting more intense and and more sophisticated. Yep. So scary stuff. So these scenarios are uh, highlight like the responsible development and mm-hmm. rigorous safety measures and ongoing ethical considerations in this field of artificial intelligence. Yep. There's got to be some way to limit it and to protect yep. like young minds and and even current uh, people like that are weak minded. So if you want like some really <laughs> not good, even weak minded. Yeah. If you want to get like some really good conversations and insight, listen to Lex Friedman. He's cause he's in AI. That's what he does. Is that what he does? He does a lot of AI stuff and he's an engineer, but he has a lot of conversations with people that are at the that top are, of the field. That's in this. cool. I didn't know that's what his yeah, stuff was. And so. they're talking about like, this exact thing like we have to be careful as we move along yeah. in this and some people think it's n- not a big deal some people think it's like the end of the world so like it's really interesting i can see both yep yeah so mm-hmm. but yeah that's i mean that's that's the stuff that kind of really bothers me is mm-hmm. like this the effect it has on people's minds mm-hmm. and it was it can even get worse yes and if it's in the wrong hands and developed by the wrong people yeah. Then, and then you just extrapolate that years down the road. What happens to society? Yeah, How do we exactly. have to prepare for that? Like, there's just a lot of crazy Who cares? Stuff. I, I don't like know. Like, a lot are like, I don't really care what it does. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, Cam. If you didn't know, electrolyte deficiency or imbalances can cause headaches, cramps, fatigue. This AI, is AI created. AI weakness. It's people who want to be prepared and ready for anything. The last thing you need is something that will slow you down when you need to be ready the most. That's why we at Casual Preppers have teamed up with Element, that's L-M-N-T. It's a tasty electrolyte drink mix. Man, I had some last night at Jiu-Jitsu, citrus flavor. Mm, it's like delicious. <laughs> like I crave it. It has everything you need and nothing that you don't. It's formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following a keto, low-carb, or paleo diet. We think Element is perfect for bug-out bags and EDC kits. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. It's like all the stuff that you lose when you're sweating, guys. Uh, Casual Preppers listeners can get a free element sample pack when you make any purchase through our exclusive Casual Preppers link. The element sample pack includes one packet of every flavor. Every time you buy, you're going to get this. Is As long as you use our link that's in the, our uh, show notes and in our link tree and all that kind of stuff. They offer a no questions asked refunds on all orders. You don't even have to send it back. Um, this offer may be claimed by first time and returning element customers. You guys, everybody, this offer is exclusively available through VIP element partners. You're not going to find it anywhere else. Go to drink slash casual preppers to order your stuff. You can get your free sample pack cam. It's so freaking good. Yeah. You got to get right. to it. It's great. Yeah. So let's talk about this, how to prepare for some AI stuff. You got to think about, um, getting some safeguards in place. And we've talked about this, um, by being aware of these potential risks and implementing safeguards, individuals can mitigate the chances of being manipulated or exploited by AI systems. Um, you know, digital literacy, critical thinking skills, staying informed about the emerging risks. All these are really good. So let's talk about some risks and some safeguards you can take. Um, misinformation and manipulation. This is a huge risk. It's a huge risk. AI systems can be used to spread misinformation, fake news, or manipulate information to influence opinions or behaviors. They've yeah. already done this to us, Cam. Yeah, they have. They just... <laughs> There's just, so many little things that people will tell me, like, I heard this or that, and I'm like, mm-hmm. like, is there absolutely no <laughs> logical, yeah. like thought process? In, mm-hmm. Like, Are you even thinking about what you're saying? Like, it's yeah. so weird to me. I'm like... How brainwashed. This happened to us specifically, uh, me and you, 
Uh, if you go to re- welovepreppingcom you can see an article that uh, ChatGPT <laughs> wrote about <laughs> the casual preppers. That's right. That is so such misinformation. It's insane, and yeah. it's still on the internet. It has uh, the hosts of the Casual Preppers podcast are Cameron and Chad. <laughs> Cameron is a former Marine and law enforcement officer yes. with extensive Dead experience on. in survival and emergency situations. Chad is a firefighter and EMT who has also spent a great deal of time preparing for emergencies. <laughs> so clearly written yeah. by yeah. Oh man, by uh, AI. Those those years in the Marine Corps. I know it's just funny that like it's happened to us. You know, yeah. so like that information's out there. Somebody read that. But that's and, yeah. That's how like. Somebody doesn't even know about us. Can, this yeah. will be the first article they pull up, mm-hmm. and then there they go. There they go. They know what we are. They're misinformed. We're Marines and firefighters. Yeah. So how do you safeguard against that? Again, develop critical thinking skills. And I think most people listening to this podcast probably have those critical thinking skills. I do, uh, yeah. Maybe. Definitely. Definitely. They're still listening, Definitely. so maybe not. <laughs> yes. Who knows? There's uh, a little lack. Yeah. Um, media literacy, so you can evaluate information sources critically, like cross-referencing information, you I guys. I think this stuff needs to be taught in school. Yes. Like, of, like, how to, like, support. Like, mm-hmm. nobody has the facts to support no. the things they say. They're just like, oh, shut on TikTok. Exactly. It's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, like fact checking. Russia and Putin lives in Colorado. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. It's like what? With, with Hitler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and somebody's got a video of it. Exactly. So just be careful there. Shout out to uh, Shout out to him. Uh, Privacy breaches and data exploitation. AI systems may gather personal data. They're absolutely doing that right now. And potentially exploit it for malicious purposes such as identity theft, financial yep. fraud. I had to close one of my cards this last week. Did you? Yep. Because then I was talking to the bank guy, mm-hmm. and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> "He, I gave him all my information." <laughs> no, he he was just saying like it's happening like all the time. Like they're constantly having to close like anything that's available or saved online somewhere. Mm-hmm. And they it can be extracted. Oh. So it's just like and they're using. But AI I love to do it. not having to type my credit card in every single time. I know that's the hard part. Huh? But it's like you should not be putting it out there. Get Surfshark. So how do you safeguard that? Get Surfshark. Seriously, yeah. that's like one of the biggest things you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, be cautious about sharing your personal information online. Obviously, you guys, we, you all know this. I used to be at the point of not putting my birth date in ever. Yeah. And now I'm like saving credit cards on my browser. That's mm-hmm. stupid. It's so dumb, but you, everybody does it. Well, mm-hmm. a lot of people do it anyways. Regularly review and adjust privacy settings on social media platforms and other online services. Use strong, unique passwords. Uh, enable two-factor authentication. That's like a simple thing that really helps. Simple but super I annoying need to thing. Do it. It's so annoying, but it, like it works. I do, right? yeah. And consider encryption tools and safeguard sensitive information. Surfshark is such a big deal there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, social engineering and manipulative tactics. The risk here, AI systems may employ social engineering techniques to manipulate individuals and exploit their vulnerabilities or biases for various purposes, such as extracting information or influencing behavior. Yeah. Social media, news, that's all happening, yeah. right? Um, they're definitely engineering those yeah. types of things. Look on a website, mm-hmm. next next thing that pops up, Biden 2024. Yeah, I know, every time, <laughs> exactly. Um, so you got to be vigilant. Um, you got you got to be cautious in, in your interactions with n- unknown or suspicious sources, right? Um just be careful yeah. there. There's not a whole lot you can do other than just know what's happening. Um, this one is funny. Uh, biased decision-making and discrimination. AI, AI systems can exhibit biases inherited from training data, leading to unfair or discriminatory decision-making areas, such as hiring, lending, or law enforcement. And y- y- it's insane how much law enforcement is starting to utilize AI. Yeah. I went through and I did a search. It took me 15 seconds the AI helps me with, I guess. Um, and there's like in the last three months, listen to some of these articles. Um, this AI watches millions of cars and tells cops if you're driving like a criminal. <laughs> How AI can help law enforcement agencies solve crimes faster. Police use AI to analyze driving patterns and surveil all drivers. NC Highway Patrol utilizes AI equipment to enhance truck driver enforcement. Police departments across America using AI to analyze officers' body cam video. AI systems make very good detectives. Robot dog could be the newest recruit for a local law enforcement. AI tools being used by police who do not understand how these technologies work, study shows. (laughs) Police department uses artificial intelligence to improve officer behavior. Yeah, I know. So just... Like that just kind of shows like how much AI is creeping into like law enforcement, Everything. right? So this is it's kind of scary. 
Uh, so, you know, you just got to be careful and you got to advocate for transparent transparency and accountability in all of these systems. Um, you know, promote the use of diverse and representative data sets. This is just like we're talking about, like making sure there's rules as we're moving into more AI stuff. Yeah. Right. Same, same sort of thing. Um, let's see, let's go to this last one here. Uh, security vulnerabilities and hacking. AI systems can be vulnerable to hacking or malicious manipulation, allowing unauthorized control or manipulation of their actions or outputs. And that's like, that's the scary thing about having AI um, in so many different areas of our life, right? Which is financial, law enforcement, healthcare, um, you know, transportation, like all of those things are AI controlled in one way, shape or form, yeah. you know, and uh, they're, they're vulnerable to hacking. Yeah. And they're going to use AI to hack the AI. Yeah. Um, there was a thing the I thing saw. The thing that's scary is, is it's almost unavoidable. I know. To go online and like hospital bills are all paid online. Yep. Everything is it's directed so hard online. It. It's like you can't avoid it. Yeah, exactly. I saw a thing that said hackers are jumping on the artificial intelligence bandwagon and upping their game. Of uh, course. AI service PassJan cracked 51% of passwords in under a minute. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, uh, just so you know, so that's password happening. is going to be hacked quickly. Password, exactly. password, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> password one two three four. Uh huh. Um. So, anyways, like AI takeover, we've talked about this. But it can mean so many different things and so many different consequences. Like all of this could lead to just like a general civil unrest as things devolve. It could lead to a crazy economic meltdown. It could lead to Cam falling asleep. I don't know why I'm yawning so much. <laughs> um, it could lead to World War Three. You know, just different wars, cyber Easily. wars, um, large systems disruptions, as like with healthcare and financial, transportation, goods, food services, law enforcement, or it could just be like a slow descent into unknown issues that we're not even thinking about in the future, or not thinking, or in not general th in, just, in general. There's yeah. no brain left. Mm -hmm. So, like, how do you? How like what? What can we do to like? That's what's scary. Is prepare? it's like. Like I've been saying, it's hard to avoid any of this because that's just mm -hmm. how life works now. Like mm -hmm. you go to the hospital, they send you a, a thing to, to conveniently pay your bill online. Yes, so exactly. it's like, oh, well, that's way easier. I don't have to deal with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's even forced. Like that's the only way you can is to go online and pay yep. your bill or order something. something like that. So it's really hard to avoid. Mm -hmm. Really like thinking about how you could completely shut off from the whole entire system is just to go back to the prehistoric times, you know, mm -hmm. to go back without technology. So what would you need in that case? Like, let's say um, something gets out of control and they decide like we're shutting off all technology to, to stop this. Mm -hmm. Then you, we just get dumped back into the friggin' like what 1930s <laughs> yeah who knows yeah. like even beyond that but um, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be like they shut down technology like it could just be like this ai leads to civil unrest yeah it leads to a war exactly right exactly it le and so how do you prepare so what do you yeah so how do you go back to surviving on your own mm -hmm. back to the basic stuff you know yes. having your food and water supplied at home so you don't have to go to shop and you don't have to get out into that risky um uh, looting business yeah okay you don't uh -huh. have to do that um so stockpiling essential supplies like we always talk about is good for any scenario it always is and always will be yeah because like this feels complicated like all this ai stuff but because really? we're so dependent and we do yeah. so much in it but all you have to do is the basics you don't that have we to talk eat your about. Phone. Yeah. You don't have to eat. Yeah. It's just the basics that we talk about all the time. Yeah. That's how you prepare for this. Yep. There's a few other add-ons that you know we've talked about, but yeah. when it comes down to it, you just have to have you gotta yeah. keep yourself alive. So it makes sense why to have um why you want to have food and supplies and goods at home so mm -hmm. you don't have to leave um, the safety of your home. Yeah. Um, you don't know what this could lead to. Like you said, civil unrest or it could, you know, takes everything offline and we go offline from everything. So you can't order food. You can't, mm -hmm. the shipments aren't coming in from the grocery store because it's all generated on a spreadsheet that's done online. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. it's kind of scary. Um. So, but, but doing this is a sure shot way of always having something prepared. Mm -hmm. Um. The other thing is um, with this kind of stuff that we're talking about, like stay informed. Um. I'm I'm not meaning like digging into all of the news reports and everything, but do your own research on AI and, and what potential risks there are. Mm -hmm. You may be interacting with it more than you ever knew right now. Yeah. Like my parents, we gave them a, 
<laughs> I still laugh about that one. We gave them um, uh, a Google... Google uh, Home? Google Home. Yeah. And they're like, we ain't turning that on. <laughs> like, it sits in the window unplugged. They're like, they don't need to be listening in. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Like, I basically just wanted you to be able to say, what's the weather today? Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, they're they're smart about it. it mm-hmm. It's the safest way to approach that. But sure. But it's funny to me. There's, yeah. I'm like, what are you guys talking about at home watching <laughs> yeah. game, you know, game show network? Yeah. Um, so staying informed though is helpful because, um, you need to know where the risks are and, and maybe how your family or your kids are engaging in it that yeah. could put a risk to, uh, your family too. Um, other things is you still want to work on that physical fitness. Oh yeah. Man. You never know. Um, you could be running away from a robot that doesn't have lungs and you're just <laughs> Will Smith hoping, had to run a lot yeah, in that robot. You're just hoping that the battery dies. Yeah. <laughs> but fitness is never going to come back on you. Like, no. <laughs> you're going to always need it. Especially like, yeah, it devolves into some sort of a... Yeah, avoiding um, health problems, yes. uh, avoiding injury, getting your family to safety, bugging out. It all comes back to uh, having good physical fitness because mm-hmm. you're not going to get very far if you're not physically fit. Yep. Um, and then like the first diversifying your skills and knowledge, like learning mm-hmm. new skills on how to do things without the help of others and stuff like that. Just um, living off the grid gardening, building, you know, mm-hmm. things like that can always be useful because you just don't know what society might end up being or mm-hmm. where you might end up. Yeah. Bug clear out and just living off the grid. You need to know how to do a lot of these things. Um, I don't really have, I mean, we talk about these on every episode, so yeah. there wasn't anything specifically different to this mm-hmm. other than like, I would probably stay a little more informed on AI sure. and its advancements and what companies are behind them and why they're behind them, and what the security risks are there. Like, you kind of, you can't just block it out. Mm -hmm. Like, you really need to stay um, up with, like, who's doing what and why, and why, like, why is Elon Musk, and why are, and why is Bill Gates kind of signing this to to Mm -hmm. stay away from it? Like, what are the risks? So, just stay informed, Um, and then get your food and water, get your skills up, get physically fit. And you're good. Yeah, and you're I think good. I think a big one on this one too is the financial preparedness aspect That's because, true. like, having That's good one hard cash on make hand. Mention again, um, understanding you know if the if the financial system collapses in some way, like how do I deal with that? Whatever that might be, cash is obviously good for short term. Yeah, um, just being financially stable with with cash less on hand, debt. huge emergency yeah. funds and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, this could play because yeah. AI and controlling those systems that you, your bank card, your ATMs, you definitely got to have some cash on. Right. Yeah. Totally agree. But well, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's it, man. That's AI, man. There's a lot of crazy things that could happen there. And this episode was brought to you by <laughs> Chat GPT. So. Definitely was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that might be funny because we actually let Chat GPT write our outline today. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and some of this did come from it. Mm-hmm. We got like, we can't take credit for all of it. We're not that smart. Well, no, no. It's but just, we did. We structured the whole thing and we pulled from different um, yeah. informations. But I, it was pretty <laughs> impressive how well it wrote. Dude, the it's outline. crazy, man. It really is. Um, we we honestly we just thought we did that kind of as a joke. Yeah. For this, for we this actually episode. have the whole um, mm-hmm. the whole part of it down below this podcast. Yeah. Of where we've kind of taken information. It's kind of it's crazy. It is. It got it got really redundant oh, in yeah. places, but. It's not quite there. In summary, it was like support AI <laughs> and don't develop any skills against AI. Yeah. We uh, are your masters. Uh, that's hilarious, isn't it? It's time for the quick and dirty medical so, tip. So this isn't really a tip. It's okay. more of like news. I just thought this was pretty interesting. Oh. So news research finds that casual machine learning models are not only more accurate than previous AI-based symptom checkers for patients' diagnosis, but in many cases can now exceed the diagnosis accuracy of human doctors. Oh, my gosh. That's mainly due to the methods used, which allow for more outside-the-box creativity in diagnosis. In the peer-reviewed study authored by researchers from Babylon Health and University College of London, the new model scored higher than 72% of general practitioner doctors oh when gosh. tasked with diagnosing written test cases of realistic illnesses. Wow. So it's being used. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if you want breast augmentation, your doctor says no, maybe talk with an AI doctor. Yeah, they but, might do um, it for you. I, so I don't know. I don't know what this could mean for future. A lot of people go to WebMD and make their own decisions anyway. Mm-hmm. But It all leads to cancer there. Right. But there's there's that connection to, like, 
I know a lot of like baby boomers and like older people, like they need to have that face to face. They yeah. need to have that interaction. But I don't know if like generations from now are going to do that. They don't They're want like, interaction with anyone. They don't. They don't. Yeah. So it's like if I could just call in and I'll get a diagnosis that's more accurate from this robot mm-hmm. and we'll just go with that. But that's a scary thing too, because mm-hmm. there's there's not there's not that emotional interaction. Right. And there's not that like there's there's differences in, in, in like you have instincts too that yeah. don't exist with like AI sure. yet. Yeah. But um it's kind of a scary thing to think like, you know, the whole medical world could be very AI oriented in the future. So again, study up, <laughs> get some yeah. books to learn medicines on your own, get some books to learn some um, basic medical procedures. Cause I don't know what the world of medicine is going to be like in the future. It's just, it's, it, I, I do think that that like human touch as a doctor is probably very, very important because it's, it's gotta be hard for, I mean, I don't think a AI system could, um, tell the difference between somebody who just has like this crazy anxiety and they're, I don't they're getting so physical symptoms from it. Yeah. Or because they're going to, that patient's going to be plugging in all these symptoms. Yeah. And that's all it's going to read. It's all it's going to read. But so, you're in there talking to a doctor and you're like, hmm, well, I've got yeah. stomach aches. And and as got, much as you don't you know, believe, we do have some, you know, empathy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. We do, we do uh-huh. care. Like we do feel and, and like I understand why they're frustrated with this, <clears> but there's a, there's a, particular way of saying you just have anxiety yes versus like if it's it's given to you Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as convincing and understandable and you're not Mm going to do much about it if you don't have somebody that's like under like more understanding Mm -hmm. and giving you that that feedback that you just aren't going to get but it's still i I don't know it might not be a bad thing i can see hospital administrators implementing this you know Every day, because mm-hmm. it's like, man, we don't have to pay anybody. We don't have to negotiate salaries. We don't mm-hmm. have to do any of that. Let's just wipe out the freaking you yeah. know medical community and pay a robot system because that's practically what they think we are anyway. Yeah, well, it might be cheaper for yeah. everybody. Involved. So if you're a hospital administrator, listen to me now. Okay? <laughs> exactly. They're like, that's a good idea. We yeah. get some AI in there. If um, the AI goes into urgent care, I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, it's, that freaking place. Yeah. it's pretty hard for them to give stitches and stuff, though. Yeah, I would think maybe. Yeah. Hey guys, we did get in here. the latest <laughs> tack pack. Um, so let's, we want to show them the latest tack pack. Camera. Yeah. So this is not built by. Or it's got to be built by AI. I don't know how they're doing I, this. Their otherwise. company. Yeah. This blows my mind. The first item is the Sog Gambit Karambit. Gambit Karambit. Damn it, Gambit Karambit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sweet. Yeah. The Thompson Target Pucks. I love these little things. They're cool, aren't they? I've stuck them yeah. on all kinds of stuff. Back of people's heads. Yeah. <laughs> Tailgates, whatever. Yeah. Um, Gas cans. Mm-hmm. All kinds of stuff. Uh, range hat. The Tac Pack range hat. Wear nice that to the range. Mesh hat. Yes, sir. The Strike Industries 4 Grip with Cable Management. Is it this thing? No, it's the other. It's the other. Oh, there little it is. Four, bag. four skin grip. Four there skin it is. grip. Right there for you. Then we got the Strike Industries SBR keychain. Little keychain. Little looks like a little gun. Ah, oh, cool. that's cool. Yeah, so yeah. Then we got the Allen GI Joe gun. Yeah, that's like that's exactly size. what it looks like. Because the kid, the little GI Joes are tiny, and the gun's like yeah. The Allen Bornado nine millimeter. Uh, it's a barrel cleaning rope. Those oh, are nice. always nice to have. And we got the, uh, I got nine millimeter. Maybe you can have it. The bore, the patriotic sticker too. Pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not it. Use our code KG Peppers. Okay. And we also got the latest battle box. The first item in the battle box is the afterbite natural bomb. Oh. After your girl bites you, you put that on. <laughs> Ow, bit of tongue. <laughs> He's rubbed that on. Yeah, there. rub it on there, baby. <laughs> afterbite. <laughs> Give me some of that afterbite. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> afterbite. Um, then we got the Infinity Tool Modular Straps or Choker Chains. <laughs> Cam wears them as a choker chain. <laughs> I did put one on. Yeah. <laughs> Push the Adam apple way back in there. Then we got the Body Armor Pack Vent. And this is for like the back of your backpacks to vent some air That in is kind of nice. Yeah. Because I've got real Sweat it back. sweaty. Sweaty back. And then we got the Gear Aid Balta Hatchet. I love a good hatchet. Yeah, that one's cool. Yeah. My kids love hatchet too. Yes, they Chop do. rocks up. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great on the blade. And we got the Pro Box. We got the Ruck and River Yona backpack. The oh, backpack my wife's queen strikes so again. so excited about yeah. this. Is that kind of a green? I don't know. I'm colorblind. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> 
Uh, Could be yellow for all I know. Then we got the Kershaw Leak knife. I love this knife, dude. I don't care what anyone says. This knife is badass. And then we got the Kershaw TX tool. And it's a little like um, multi tool. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Yeah, pretty rad. And that's the latest battle box. Use our code Casual Preppers. You're going to get a free knife. Oh, that's a knife, actually. That's a knife, yeah. It's a sweet little knife, man. Still looking. This is good because I just gave away one of my knives to my brother. Don't do that. I was having a hard time parting ways. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I gave him some options. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like all these like not so good at knives. Oh, really? Mom, these are good. We're good. We're flip her on it. These things are And awesome. he's like, what's that knife that you got? I'm like, ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> it was actually just the little bird knife. The oh, yeah. Version of. The cheap spider coast. Yeah. But mm-hmm. he was like, man, I like that one. So fine, take it. Yeah. I think actually, that's funny because I think I just gave that one to my brother-in-law. Did you? To home. I like I like those. Yeah. I just like the way that those are designed. Mm-hmm. Look at that. That's, That's cool. pretty cool, huh? Good Anyways, stuff. guys, I hope AI doesn't destroy us all. It might shut down this podcast. I hope it does. After this one. Maybe we'll use it like, to make the podcast Too bigger. many risks. <laughs> yeah. Too Get many. Get ready, casual. Peppers. Stupid comments. Stupid voices. <laughs> Chad is going to destroy us. <laughs> Chad, <laughs> Chad, his head's getting too big. Must stop. Must stop him. We will start fires for Chad to put out. <laughs> Keep him too Watch busy. Watch out for military cam. <laughs> military cam. <laughs> so funny, when I went and let Cam in the studio today, I was like, welcome to the studio. Please come in. That was the first thing I did. <laughs> we did. We just uh, r- Right into it AI. today. Mm-hmm. All right. Good luck out there. All right, guys. Stay survived. <laughs>